The Bible is the mark of the beast. Today, I'm going to tell you something that's, it's the worst time in history to reconcile people back to God. You know why? Because they already think they're reconciled back to God. You can't save a person that's already saved. Now, this happened back when uh, Queen James authorized the Bible, even when Constantine compiled the Bible. They started saying the Bible's the word of God. And they, then they put their faith in this. Now, think about, think about this. A person will take a book, and they'll open this book, and it'll tell them in there, it said, if you confess with your mouth and you uh, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. See, that's a lie. You can't take, that's insane. You can't take a book and open it and claim words out of it and save you. That don't save you. You see, that is completely insane. Now, if it said, if you confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you have the Holy Ghost, you can be saved. Now think about this, right? Plain and simple. I'm a plain and simple person. Jesus wants me to tell things plain and simple. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fell upon them people, that was the new covenant. That's what we live under. That's what the Gentiles live under. If Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, then they're a law unto themselves. He writes his laws in our hearts. All right, now, think about this. Them 120 people standing there on the day of Pentecost, and that's where our church started. That's why I claim I'm a Pentecost, because it started on Pentecost. All right, and that's our church. That's our kingdom. And what did that person need? Had God in them. They didn't have no buildings. They didn't have no books. They didn't have them. All they had was God in them. That was sufficient. They were reconciled back to God because God came and lived in them. He'll give the Holy Ghost to them that believe in him. So it's impossible to save people that save today. They say, oh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. No, it don't come by hearing this book. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the spirit of God. He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says. And you know what they'll go so far as to say that a bunch of the churches, they'll say, they get a Bible, Holy Ghost. They'll say, Oh, you get the Holy Ghost when you get saved. Well, it's strange that the Holy Ghost never does nothing for them. I mean, they don't let the Holy Ghost speak in the church. They don't ever have anything from the Holy Ghost. All right, now, let me let me tell you something that is the most amazing thing people tell me. They tell me, say, say Hillbilly, said, you're a, a real genuine, hundred proof, full-blooded Christian. Why don't you go out and heal the sick and cast out devils and and do all these one. I'm going to tell you a secret. That don't work. It says that Jesus said, many will come to me and say, we cast out devils in your name and done many wonderful works in your name. And he'll say, I never knew you. He don't know you if you don't have the Holy Ghost. We say, I've done that. Now think about this. I worked in a church one time. I actually seen paralyzed people healed. I seen people that couldn't see be healed. Blind, they about nearly blind, they'd be healed. And take away, throw away their glasses. They didn't need them anymore. And I've seen many, many things that happened. It was miracles. Nobody even went to doctors. They'd have babies at home and everything. It was not, it was nothing that God couldn't do. I've seen him put hands back together, fingers cut off and everything. Just put them back together. I've seen it with my own eye. But you know what? That don't do it. If you, if I went right now into a church where it was, um, a Baptist or a Pentecostal church, and I work miracles in there, you know what they say? They say, it's because we believe right, because we believe in the Bible. That's why that's the reason God healed us all. And I say, no, it's because I'm a son of God and God works through me because I believe the Bible's an idol. They'll never believe that. They won't. Now, if I told Jesus, I said, Lord, this is hard down here. Send about uh, 10,000 angels and let's get this thing let's stir up the world make cows fly or something let's do something to show people that believing in the Bible is not the right way and he said no it's irreconcilable you cannot reconcile it Paul said he had the ministry of reconciliation God was in Christ reconciling the world back unto himself this to make us back join back to God friendly with God but they can't do it because they believe the Bible's Word of God. You know what I think? 
They take the Bible and made a new covenant. Instead of being controlled by the Holy Ghost, they're controlled by the Bible. See, they pay tithes. They go to church on Saturday or Sunday. They keep the Sabbath day. They do all these laws. And what reason they do it? Because they can do what they want to do in the flesh after they go to church for an hour on Sunday. See, if God lives in them, they have to do what God wants them to do. If this is what they're controlled by, then they can do anything they want to do because it's you can twist them scriptures. But the Holy Ghost, you can't twist them around. That's the reason it's irreconcilable differences. You know, when people get divorced, they're separated, they call it irreconcilable differences. Used to, in the old days, they'd call it mental cruelty or something, the way people thought. Well, this is what they do today. They call it irreconcilable differences. Now, we was reconciled back to God through Jesus Christ. But today, the churches are set up in a form. And each church you go to, they'll have different doctrines and different ways of worshiping. And you tell them, say, how can... You all have the Holy Ghost and there'll be 41,000 different denominations. And they said, we got it right. Every church will tell you, I don't care if it's Baptist, Mormons, or Seventh-day Adventist, whoever it is. They said, we got it figured out right. We got the Bible figured out right. Now, they got God in this book. And like on the day of Pentecost, say there's a man standing there. I said, now, what are you going to do? You got God in you. You ain't got no church or anything. I said, all these are my brothers and sisters. And I got God in me. He'll teach me. He'll comfort me. He'll lead me and guide me. I don't need nothing else. Apostle Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? You see, that's what reconciles you back to God. When God comes in you, you're reconciled back to him. He gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. The only way to be reconciled back to God is for God to come in you. And he said, if you keep my commandment, my son and I will make our abode in you. They will live. He'll dwell in you, walk in you and talk in you. That's reconciliation. That's true reconciliation. But when they think they got God, you know, it, it always amazed me. Did you ever see a big old Buddha sitting up there? And them people worship Buddha. A lot of people worship Buddha. And I think, how can they worship a dumb idol that can't talk or walk or speak? Well, it's the same way with this. This thing can't speak. They make it speak. They make their image say, Bible says, the Bible says. The Bible won't never say nothing. Never says nothing. And they use it to go to church, forsake not to send yourself together, go into all the world. They claim them words, go into all the world. And, and they claim all of the words about pay tithes, bring all your tithes into the storehouse. And they control by this. And you cannot get them out of there. I've tried for 45 years. And very few come out. Very, there's a few Holy Ghost people. And you know what? Most of them's hit out. Because if you don't worship the Bible, if you're in business, you can't buy and sell. If you're in business. So today you're living in a world that's irreconcilable. You cannot reconcile it back. So we have to resolve ourselves to be this way. It's got to be that way. This is an end time message. See, this is from uh, the, the 10th chapter of the book of Revelation. He said, John, you must prophesy this to many nations, tongues, kings, and people because they're going to take a book and think it's the word of God and they're going to be bitter. You see, you're not reconciled back to God because you believe in a book. A book can't reconcile you back to God. To be reconciled makes you be friendly again with one another and love one another and love God and have fellowship with God. You can't have fellowship with a book. You can't. Uh, if, if you can look in here and say, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I'll be saved. Then the devil can be saved. The devil opens this up and says, hey, I can get saved. This ain't the word of God. You can't be reconciled by a book. You've got to be reconciled by the anointing, by the Spirit. That's the way you're reconciled back to God. So today, we, we're up against the hardest time it's ever been. You can't save people that's already saved. You can't save people that think they got God. You go into their churches, and there's 41,000 different denominations, and every one of them will tell you they got it figured out right. Everybody else is wrong. That's the way they say it. And so it's irreconcilable. So what we have to do, little children, best we can, leave a light burning. You know how they say it's better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. So we'll be here to tell people this truth. You can't be saved with a Bible. The Bible's not the word of God. It's an idol. It's the mark of the beast. And we keep telling them, and we'll get a few. Satan's losing a few of them. And the Bible's being diminished anyway. It's weakened a lot now. So remember, you're living in a world that has irreconcilable differences and there's not much we can do, but we keep trying to get them in the Holy Ghost. While kneeling in my life of disappointment, lying within my heart I could not see. Pieces of my life were scattered about me. Then Jesus' hands 
in love reached out for me. And I love him because he understands me. Oh, I love him because he sets me free. I love him because of Mount Calvary. And I love him most because he first loved me. Now I have the strength to serve the Savior. His spirit came and set this captive free. Storms of life can never wound the feeling. By faith in God, his voice is guiding me. And I love him because he understands me. Oh, I love him because he set me free. Oh, I love him because of my Calvary. Yes, I love him most because he first loved me.